Last time, in episode 10, we started top end reassembly and covered proper piston and cylinder assembly. In this episode, we finish the top end and move on to the head rebuild, including installing valves and checking valve lash. All right, so we have the cylinder head for the Honda 450X, and we're gonna be putting the, the, la the final valve in. Uh, we have three of the valves in already, so we're just gonna give you guys a, a walk through on, on that last valve. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and, and remove the, the old valve stem seal. Just be careful not to, to damage this, the guide, and it should come off relatively easy. Let's place that aside. So then we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, install the, the new uh, valve guide seal and then uh, it should just pop on. Just make sure it's seated down nicely and all on there. And that should be good to go. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, put a little bit of that on the stem just to provide enough lubrication so that it, uh, for uh, initial fire up. And then we're gonna add a little bit of that to the stem seal on the head as well so that when we go to push it through, it pops in nicely. So now that that's in, go ahead and install the valve spring. On most springs, they're going to be either marked with the paint, as you can see on the exhaust side, or you can you can see the uh, the difference in the the uh, windings on the spring. In general, the uh, the coils are wound tighter at the base, so you just want to keep a uh, keep an eye out for making sure that your your springs aren't an upside down. Um, so yeah, just a, a, a note there. Go ahead and bring it over to the spring compressor. Go ahead and compress the spring. And usually you compress it just enough to where the stem is just popping above the, uh, the spring retainer. And usually you don't need to go any further because if you go any, uh, if the, if you go further, the uh, spring keepers or the valve keepers will want to fall down too far past the groove. So it makes it uh, usually a little bit easier on yourself if you can just compress it just uh, as little as possible. And I use a small pair of needle nose pliers or some tweezers and the keepers should be able to, to fall in. You should be able to rock the head just a little bit to open up to you know, have the, the valve stem uh, favor either the left or the right side of the spring retainer so that you can kind of get the keepers to walk in. And then once they're dropped into the, into the groove on the valve, I'll reduce the tension and then focus on uh, making sure that your, uh, your keeper spacing is, is even. So you don't want them to be bunched up onto one side. And uh, I prefer to place the, um, the openings of the keepers you know, in, in, in line so I can keep them all the same direction. It's just cosmetically nice so when you go to adjust your valves everything looks everything looks uh, consistent and you should usually be able to use just a small pick to adjust the opening and where the openings on that keeper fall and then once you have it spaced properly and opened up you can just reduce the tension and that will engage the keepers on the valve all right so then the, the valve keeper spacing that we were talking about is the gap between the the you know each side keeper on the valve itself so keeping those gaps consistent and spaced out makes that they don't make sure that they don't bind and also make sure that they uh, won't have a possibility it limits the possibility of having a valve drop or any kind of valve failure if the tension is evenly placed on each side of the valve so again keeping that these in line looks nice and keeps the valve uh, valve train strong All right, so now that we have the valves in the head, we can go ahead and uh, make sure our valve lash is set up. Um, so we can go ahead and do this on the bench. It's a lot easier than doing it once it's in the bike. So we can go ahead and place the cam tower assembly onto the cylinder head, being mindful that the buckets can slide out. So just be prepared for, for that and don't let them slide out. And also on this particular engine, the cam lobes at TDC will be facing uh, towards the intake, just to make it easier for bolting down the cam tower so you're not compressing valve springs. And then when checking the lash, I'll 
just snug the cam tower hardware up. I don't need to torque it quite yet, just because I won't be getting to that point. But it'll just keep the cam tower down against the valves. So being mindful to where the engine is, uh, the cam is supposed to be located at TDC on this particular setup. The mounting bolts for the cam sprocket are at about a 45 degree angle, but depending on the year, that can that can change. So just uh, you know, take note for on your engine uh, where your TDC lines will line up for your cam sprocket. Uh, on this engine, the intake uh, valve lash, I'll set them about at about six thousandths of an inch. That's within spec. So then that one, you'll just set the make sure that the cam is in your uh, TDC location and then your feeler gauge. That one's a little tight, so we'll need to go ahead and adjust that one. But the feeler gauge should, should uh, slide through with just a little bit of, of friction on it, so you should be able to just feel it. So that one, that one's at a six, so that one's gonna be within spec. So we'll wanna uh, check the other intake side so that we can make adjustments for the valve lash. Yeah, so this, this size at about a five, which is still within spec, but uh, we might loosen it up just a little bit. And then for the exhaust side, the exhaust side is generally run at a looser spec, so I believe the OEM spec for this is 11,000 plus or minus one, but we'll run them in the eight to 10 range, keeps the exhaust just a little bit quieter. Those ones are a loose eight, so those ones check out. So we'll go ahead and make an adjustment for the one that's a little bit tighter and then uh, get it on the engine and get this thing ready to go. So when, when checking your valve lash, uh, always make sure to uh, refer to your service manual for your particular engine and make sure that your lash is within spec for, for your specific model. <laughs>